Yeah, so uh, first off, uh, I think we need to have an understanding of some of the, the facts about education spending in North Carolina. You know, for three of the past five years, uh, we've seen uh, uh, some of the largest pay increases that uh, North Carolina's teachers uh, have seen. In fact, we've led the nation uh, in, uh, or second in the nation, in the rate of increase uh, in a couple of those years. So uh, we've moved up uh, 18 slots uh, in the uh, NEA rankings uh, over the past four or five years. So a lot of positive things uh, about education. I think people need to understand that uh, the NCAE is, uh, for all practical purposes, an arm of the state Democratic Party and uh, their effort to, uh, uh, to conduct this, uh, this rally. On a day when, uh, when kids ordinarily would be in school uh, and uh, uh, should be in school uh, uh, is, uh, is somewhat problematic, but uh, it's not really a surprise. But kind of taking politics out of it, do you feel that some of these teacher concerns are legitimate and real? So I think teacher concerns are legitimate and real, and uh, we've addressed uh, many of those concerns, and there's still more to be done. But remember, this is, uh, this is a rally that is organized by the NCAE. It is not a teacher rally. It is a uh, North Carolina Association of Educators rally, and the North Carolina Association of Educators is, for all practical purposes, an arm of the Democratic Party. How did the rally go last year? How do you feel that that went, even just the teachers being here and speaking to you, speaking to other lawmakers? I think for those teachers that met with lawmakers and uh, talked about what was going on in their classrooms and talked about what was going on as far as their students are concerned and talked about policy that, uh, that can improve outcomes for, for, uh, uh, for students, I think all that was very positive. I think unfortunately uh, a number of, uh, of, of incidents uh, occurred that, uh, that were not about uh, what's good for the kids and what's good for education. So, uh, and, and again, last year, similar situation where uh, you have uh, tens of thousands of students who uh, hopefully would be in school, uh, in class, uh, are being uh, out or deprived of uh, that opportunity because a far left uh, group that's an arm of the Democratic Party wants to have a rally. They could do it on another day. They could do it uh, after school lets out. We'll still be here in, uh, in June. Tell me too, you know, a lot of the focus I feel like you've been putting out in your press releases is, you know, hey, we have increased teacher pay over the last couple of years. We've definitely gone up in the NEA uh, rankings. But some of the concerns that I've heard are kind of not just that. It's about school supplies. It's about safer classrooms. It's about getting more hands on deck and for, and like, the form of TAs, school nurses. How are you going about addressing those issues, not just teacher pay? So uh, those, those issues, uh, as far as uh, school supplies, uh, there, there have been uh, proposals introduced. You know, we we have a, uh, a budget line item that uh, calls for a certain amount of money to be spent on uh, school supplies. Unfortunately, what happens is when those dollars reach the local system, the local system has the authority to move those dollars around. And so, unfortunately, a lot of uh, that money ends up going for central office personnel or for things other than uh, classroom supplies. Same, with, same way with books. You know, when, uh, when Republicans took over the General Assembly, uh, the Democrats had, for all practical purposes, zeroed out the allocation for books in, in North Carolina. Uh, we've steadily built that back up, but even in doing that, uh, because of the flexibility that we give local systems, a lot of that money doesn't end up uh, purchasing books. It gets uh, used uh, for other things that uh, local districts decide they would prefer to use the money for. In terms of safer classrooms, I know that that's been a discussion um, for a while now since some of the school shootings have happened. What have you guys done to make sure that kids are safe when they go to school? So uh, safer classrooms, when, when you say that, I, I think of at least two things, and uh, you've touched, touched on one of them. Uh, the other is uh, discipline within the classroom and whether or not uh, discipline policies are, are such that, uh, that the teacher at the head of the classroom uh, has the ability to, uh, to ensure that, uh, that, that the children in her classroom or his classroom are, um, are, are being disciplined and, and not uh, a situation where folks are, uh, are, are acting out and yet uh, nothing happens to them. So that's one, one issue. Uh, the other issue has to do with, uh, with safety with reference to, uh, to some of the incidents we've seen in other places having to do with, uh, with guns. Uh, and there's, there's been, uh, uh, we've, we've seen a couple of measures that have looked at that. And there's still a lot of discussion as to what the appropriate approach is uh, to deal with those issues. How do you feel about arming teachers? Because I know that's a very divisive thing. 
So um, w one of the things that, uh, th that I think is fairly clear is uh, that in some instances the uh, only way to stop a person with a gun is with a person with a gun. And, uh, and so uh, what's, what's the best way, if that's necessary, uh, do we have a problem with, uh, with guns in the schools? Uh, what's, what's the best way? Uh, one is to have resource officers, and uh, there's been an effort to, uh, to increase funding and to do some more uh, with resource officers. Uh, there's also some thought that uh, uh, teachers or other school personnel appropriately trained uh, being allowed to, uh, to carry a weapon or have a weapon uh, at the school uh, might be a way to deal with, uh, with uh, some of the incidents that we've seen in other states. I mean, we've been blessed in North Carolina that we haven't seen uh, those, but, um, but it, again, it's a very controversial uh, topic when you start talking about arming uh, school personnel. Uh, I personally think that uh, appropriately trained, uh, that uh, that may be part of a solution. How are we going to get the young teachers to come to this state, or if they're already here, stay here? In, uh, in 2011, 2012, North Carolina's pay for beginning teachers was at the bottom in the region. So uh, pay is something that's, uh, that's important when folks uh, are, are looking for their first job or any job. So one of the things that we've done is we increased beginning teacher pay, the state funded portion of beginning pay, uh, uh, from, uh, from the lowest in the region to uh, where we're competitive in the region. Uh, and uh, so that's, that's one thing. Another is the question of uh, licensure. What, what does it take for someone to get a uh, teacher's license? And we've seen where there are some issues with how North Carolina uh, regulates uh, teacher licensure, whether it's, uh, it's, it's how slow the process is or whether it's a question as to whether or not the, uh, the testing that teachers have to go through is appropriate for, uh, for the, uh, the grades that uh, they are proposing to teach. So those are, those are two issues that, uh, that we've been, been working on. Uh, we're also trying to find uh, ways to, uh, to, to make sure that uh, if someone wants to be a teacher, even if they didn't go to college uh, to be an educator, but they, they want to make a mid-career change, uh, we're trying to make what's called lateral entry, something that's uh, a little more flexible for, uh, for our uh, pr proposed educators or folks that want to be educators. But uh, let, let's, let's understand that uh, the shortage of qualified teachers is not just a North Carolina phenomenon. Uh, it is something that's going on uh, all across the country, and uh, it's, uh, it's a real challenge for us uh, as it is for other folks. So there's a big competition out there. I know one of the issues, too, was trying to reinstate master's pay. Is that something that you guys are looking at at all? So we've, uh, we, we looked at that very carefully, and uh, we made a decision several years ago that uh, because the data is pretty clear that uh, simply because someone has a master's degree uh, in education uh, or in, in another field doesn't make that person a better teacher. When you look at the outcomes for students, and really that's what it ought to be about, is, uh, is whether or not uh, our students are, are, are learning and whether or not their outcomes are better. So what we found was that the, uh, the, the research data is pretty clear that if you have a master's in math uh, and you're teaching math, you're probably a better math teacher, but if you just have a generalized education master's uh, and uh, that teacher uh, in general uh, versus a teacher that uh, has a bachelor's in education, the student outcomes are not measurably different. So we took the money that we were spending for, uh, for master's and we plugged that into the, uh, into the base teacher pay so that all teachers would benefit from that additional money. And kind of expanding beyond just the teachers in the classroom, obviously it takes more people to make a school run. So how do you feel about increasing pay for some of these classified workers like bus drivers and cafeteria workers? So remember last year, uh, we for the first time in, uh, in the country's history put a minimum pay of $15 an hour for those uh, positions that are state funded positions that, uh, that, that are considered state employees. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, uh, the, the other employees within the, within the system are generally classified as local employees. And so in some, uh, some respects, the local systems have, uh, have to step up and, uh, and do more there. But, uh, but we actually increased uh, pay for full-time state employees to $15 an hour last year. But that does not include the people that work in the schools. That's no. just... Not all folks that work in schools are state-funded positions, uh, and not all folks that, uh, that, that work in connection with the schools are, are funded uh, exclusively uh, by the state. There are a number of locally funded positions, and uh, we don't control the salary for all of those positions.
I, I read some of the comments on some of your posts, and it seems that some people, some of these parents or these teachers are saying, you're trying to paint teachers as radical. So how would you respond to some of these people that are saying that? That the NCAE leadership is a radical democratic organization. Uh, certainly not all the teachers who, uh, who are going to be here, and not all the teachers who are members of the NCAE are that. Uh, but all you've got to look, uh, all you've got to do is look at what they support and look at uh, what their priorities are. Bottom line is that this rally is not about education. This rally is not about improving the outcomes for our students. This rally really is not about teachers. This rally is about electing Democrats.